two, one. Happy Thursday. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to KSAT News Now. <laughs> that is right. Alicia Barrera, you're back. back. Welcome back. back yeah, again. had a nice little time off. Yeah. Spent some time with the family. Six, I think I was off for six days. Nice. Made it to Mexico, yeah. visited my grandma, my whole family from mm -hmm. San Luis. So it, yeah. was, it was, I think it was well deserved. <laughs> it was well, good. It looked, we ate a lot um, of good food. Yeah, so. I, and it looked like a lot of fun. So welcome back. Uh, glad you. to have you back as it is St. Patrick's Day today. Yeah, I don't really celebrate, do you? No, I, I could see you're not yeah, really no. wearing much green. Do you I have some I purposely greens? wore like whatever, <laughs> didn't have like a yeah. little green. It's not my thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the most St. Patrick's Day thing that I did was I'm wearing some greenish socks. Okay. I don't know if we could see this. Here. You oh, you Baby can't Yoda? see that. Got Baby Yoda, yeah. Baby, Baby Yoda, Yoda, help me out. You can just and then I think Justin at... had like avocados That's on right, his. yeah, yeah. But All he's right. got a better excuse. They got to be in front of the green screen, so they can't oh, wear green. True. Yeah, yeah, but hmm. uh, <laughs> yes, like we are, um, you know, celebrating St. Patrick's Day today. It's also uh, the start of March Madness, the NCAA tournament. Got some Texas teams NCAA. in there. NCAA. Yes, the NCAA tournament. So <laughs> yeah, got that going on. And of course, we are streaming on KSAT.com, all of our platforms, and also doing the most with the podcast. I was listening to that, by the way. So thanks for we keeping me about informed. <laughs> yeah. And this morning, we have a lot of news to get into. The latest in the investigation into a deadly shooting involving a San Antonio police officer. And as we saw those images play at play out, it led mm -hmm. to a really chaotic scene, mm -hmm. and this was on the west side. Yeah, and another local community in shock this morning after a Pleasanton graduate dies in a horrible bus crash out there in West Texas. But we also have some good news too. A local musician giving back by surprising people and filling up their gas tanks. Ooh, that is... Yeah. Gosh, months ago or That's maybe years ago, right we would have never thought that that was like a, a good deed. <laughs> now it is. Well, now, yeah, to fill up your tanks, it's like double what you were paying before. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely solid stuff there from this guy. We'll talk about him in just a little bit. And also, talking St. Patty's Day, the San Antonio River looking a little green today. Greener. Greener. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's not to throw shade. I think Max talked about it last time. Uh, but yeah, yeah St. Patty's Day, big celebration here. And the parade putting San Antonio on the map mm -hmm. yet again. But yeah. let's start with some international news. And despite the resistance, Russian forces continue to push through Ukraine, getting closer to Ukraine's capital of Kiev. But the latest airstrikes were just about 14 hours southeast of the capital, and that was in Mariupol. Mm -hmm. And according to Ukrainian officials, the Russian airstrikes have left 90% percent of Maripool in ruins. This latest attack ripped apart a three story theater where hundreds of people had been taking shelter in the building's basement. And this is the theater that had the word children spelled out in front of the building. And of course, that was to let the Russian forces know, mm -hmm. hey, don't don't bother these children, right. don't hurt them. But that didn't stop the Russians. According to Ukrainian officials, people were were buried in burning rubble, but were coming out alive. But still no word on how many deaths or injuries. However, the Kyiv Independent reported at least 130 survivors in that attack there. Yeah, just a, just a horrifying situation there. So meanwhile, a spokesperson, spokeswoman for Russia's foreign ministry denied the bombing, adding that the military, quote, does not bomb cities, end quote. And that is just so hard to believe that mm -hmm. every, you know, there have been multiple bombings and still Russian officials say that they deny right, any any right. hand in it, mm -hmm. and it, which is just crazy to believe. But after yesterday's call for help from the Ukraine, the U from Ukraine's president to Congress, President Joe Biden announced hundreds of millions of dollars in new security aid. And this package includes a lot. It includes mm -hmm. drones, small arms ammunition, grenade launchers, mortar rounds, body armors, helmets, of course, rifles, pistols, machine guns, and just mm -hmm. so much more. It's a really extensive list that yeah. they drafted over the yeah. weekend, and that's what they presented, and that's what they're going to get. Mm -hmm. And Ukraine's president has also pled for a no-fly zone to protect civilians on the ground from warplane attacks. However, the White House has firmly opposed this move because it would now ultimately involve American pilots in this mm -hmm. space and probably 
get this conflict into, you know, just uh, just kind of raise the tensions and get into another level there. But uh, I thought it was interesting when you brought up about uh, their denial about all this. Yeah. Um, we've seen people in Russia, their own residents, uh, speak out against some of the propaganda that's being reported by yeah. their state media and by their government officials. So you're right. I mean, to deny something like this, I mean, it's just a just a horrible thing. It's hard to believe. Yeah. Yeah. But this is just, of course, uh, a cruel, cruel reality mm -hmm. that the Ukrainian people yeah. are living right now. But now to local news. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the top local stories we've been following all this week, a man who was shot and killed by San Antonio police officers, and now we know the names of those officers involved. So police identified them as Officer Adam Rule, Officer Gus Vallas, and Officer James Quintanilla. They were patrolling an area near Woodlawn Lake Park on Monday afternoon when they came across 28-year-old Kevin Johnson. Now records show that Johnson was wanted for a gun charge. Police say that Johnson ran away from officers and pulled out a gun from his waistband, and he was then shot by those officers. The shooting led to a tense and very chaotic scene in this in the West Side neighborhood. A crowd became upset with officers and police actually had to use pepper spray on people there to get them to clear the scene. And if you remember this uh, from Monday, yeah, they were uh, at one point they had slashed uh, one of the units from SAPD and also, but it was a very confrontational thing. So rule has been on the force for six years via for four years and Quintanilla 13 years and all three have been placed on administrative duty while this investigation continues. Case at 12 News has requested body cam footage of the shooting. It has not been released yet. Mm -hmm. We are waiting on that. Um, Chief McManus in the past has said that they are trying to work faster to get that body cam. Just body cam footage when it comes to these type of situations released faster, but of course it is part of the investigation. And this one, like we've mentioned, very chaotic, very mm -hmm. tense. There's a lot that unfolded, mm -hmm. so it may take a while, but still no word on when that body cam footage could be released. Yeah, and of course the family members have spoken out about this, saying that uh, that their family member Johnson was shot multiple times, so there's been a lot of back and forth, and so as this investigation continues, we will obviously bring you the latest developments there. All right, so one of the stories that we were hearing about mm -hmm. was um, that Horrible, horrible crash. Nine people dead yeah. in West Texas. So now we have some follow-up information on that fatal head-on collision. It killed nine people. One of the victims, Travis Garcia, was actually a Pleasanton High School graduate. And he was, of course, a member of the men's golf team at the University of Southwest in New Mexico. Yeah, very sad uh, this morning, Alicia. Pleasanton ISD's athletic director, Tab Dumont, confirmed this news to KSAT 12. And Dumont released a statement that reads in part, quote, all the whole Pleasanton ISD community is in shock and grieving for the entire family. Not only was Travis a phenomenal golfer and a great kid, he comes from a great family, end quote. The fire crash happened Tuesday in Andrews County after a pickup truck crossed the center line of a two lane road and crashed into that van that carried members of the University of Southwest golf team, so both mm -hmm. for men and women. That's teams. right. And uh, six students and a faculty member were killed in the crash along with the driver and a passenger in the pickup truck. So uh, yesterday I was in Pleasanton um, do following up on this story and working on another story as well. And I spoke to Mr. Dumont on the phone. Mm -hmm. uh, that's basically when he kind of gave us the information on Travis and I just from our conversation. I mean, he was obviously just shaken by this yeah. and the entire community um, just just completely shocked. Uh, it's such a big loss for them because apparently Travis was just a great kid and he also mentioned in that statement that he already had done great things in life and he was already going to continue to do great things in life. So yeah, pretty yeah, bad. I mean to be a college situation. athlete that mm -hmm. says a lot about a person because it's not just the how good mm -hmm. they are at mm -hmm. their craft. Mm -hmm. It's also, I mean, it takes a lot of sacrifice. Their grades just, uh, it takes a village as they say. Mm -hmm. So uh, sad loss for the Pleasanton community. This is a story that's national now. Yeah, yeah. It's got a lot of attention, right, nine yeah. people dead. I, and we were talking about it just on their way to a golf tournament out there in Midland. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and for this to happen and that entire university, yeah, definitely our condolences to Pleasanton and that entire university as well. Yeah, so we do know that again, that uh, truck veered off to the to the wrong oncoming mm -hmm. traffic but still no word on why yeah what caused 
Well, uh, moving on to some uh, some other news that we were talking about. You know, we do have some good news this morning. A San Antonio musician is giving back to his community in a big way and easing some pain at the pump. So Kyle Lee said he wanted to find ways to help people in need when gas prices started to skyrocket, and he did a very good deed. Yes, he did. So Lee went to gas stations around town to help people fill up. He then came across a woman named Priscilla Maldonado. She's a mother of three who is working very hard to take care of her family. Oh, good. Y'all are empty? Good, good, good. Okay. That's what I was hoping. Thank you. All right. Have a good day, okay? Thank you. You probably spending your whole paycheck to fill up your tank. You know, especially if you got like a big SUV or something like that. So my mission was last week, I said, I'm going to go out and I'm going to help people. So Lee is a local rapper. He mm -hmm. helped Maldonado with a full tank of gas. He said that although business is good for him now, mm -hmm. it wasn't always that way. He said he was homeless at one point and actually had to sleep in his car some days. So for him to be mm -hmm. able to give back in such a huge way, yeah, and he and in that story, uh, credit to our uh, John Paul Barajas for you know talking with Kyle. That mm -hmm. story is on KSAT.com. You want to see the entirety of it. But uh, he also said that there were people also that helped him along the way too. So he did go through some tough times, but there were people there that were there for him. And he also said that he just wants to inspire positivity throughout this city and really just kind of help out those in need. And I think. From the reporting, he had filled up 13 vehicles of gas, yeah, full oh tanks gosh. from just people that were there that I guess he had talked to and maybe just kind of needed, they needed some help paying for gas. If Can you just do the math on that? I mean, on some... No, first of all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, okay, so I get really emotional when I see the videos mm -hmm. of people at the grocery store mm -hmm. give for, yeah, give back Those and yeah. um, pay for the, the entire bill. It could be 20 bucks, $2, whatever it is, if they do a good deed. So this one, I wonder if he's documenting it on his own. I think he was sharing some stuff on social media. That's okay. how he came across uh, Miss Maldonado right there because that's how they sort of connected. And so uh, he had been sharing some of this stuff on social media as well. Yeah. But again, um, a guy who, I think a lot of San Antonio's, San Antonians are, is a recognizable face and to see him actually come out and do stuff like this, especially during this, these times, is that's so pretty cool. awesome. Good stuff from the How much does it take to <laughs> Fill up your um, me. I'm, I'm at around eighty bucks now. Eighty yeah, bucks. Eighty dollars. <gasps> yeah, just to do a full tank. I heard a gasp over there. Was that Alyssa? <laughs> okay, so thirteen. Vehicles? I drive a Jeep, <laughs> so the Jeeps are not friendly with gas. Hold on. So thirteen vehicles is what he had helped. Thirteen. So far? Yes. Okay. So that's if what he said. if, yeah, if it was eighty week. bucks for every mm -hmm. person, that's more than a thousand dollars. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I know, and as you just said right there, I mean, it will just make a person's day, and hopefully yeah. they can pay that for it. Wow. Yeah, good stuff there. St. Patty's Day, it's always oh, a party downtown on the Riverwalk, but <laughs> San Antonio really does it even bigger for St. Patty's Day. I remember last year I covered mm -hmm. this story, and it was the first um, parade happening downtown where yeah. people were actually allowed to go back to the Riverwalk and gather, so it's, it's great to see them back in action, full swing. Yeah, and, and that's funny because you mentioned, I mean, being able to just kind of gather and take part in stuff like this. So because it is St. Patrick's Day, the River Walk will be dyed bright green and will feature 12 Irish themed decorated floats. Very cool. The parade will kick off at 4 p.m. from Mad Dogs right there, right on the river, and will stretch down the river for about two and a half miles. So the city's green parade is named one of the best in the entire nation. Thrillist, which is an online lifestyle website, they listed San Antonio as the fourth best following New York City, New Orleans, and then Chicago took number one. You know what? That's pretty good. I yeah. gotta say, well, shout I mean, out to San Antonio for being behind those because those are those cities go all yeah, out for Chicago St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. New York, NYC, yeah, all of them. And of course, New Orleans, big party town too. So uh, going back to the green dye, it's eco-friendly and the process actually starts today from 1 to 3 p.m. But since the color fades by 2, the second round of dyeing will take place Saturday just before parade kicks off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you say you were down there. It's pretty cool to see the the river greener. Yes. Green. A bright yes. green. Yeah. Don't throw me under the bus here. Yeah. A bright <laughs> green. A pretty. <laughs> What, what did like yeah. that Ursula's dress. Yeah, <laughs> Ursula, so do you want to Ursula. make an appearance real quick? <laughs> yeah. She's got the rollers. Go for Come it. On, Come in here. <laughs> Come on, just a quick, just a quick run in. Ursula. Oh, ah, Team Pink. Okay. Ursula oh, looking no. great and green. No, I had, I had in my socks. <laughs> <laughs> 
too late. No take backs. We've no. been pinched. <laughs> <laughs> um, the so, fashion queen Ursula Perry making absolutely. an appearance on And for people now. that are uh, <laughs> hearing us on the podcast, that was, uh, yes, Miss Ursula Perry coming in to, <laughs> to our show. She's giving us all a pinch. You can't wear green, though. <laughs> I the little that thing, thing. And I'm like, oh, that hurt. Yeah, she had the um, little pinchers out, ready to go. She I'm no really wonder did. she was doing that. I didn't, yeah. it didn't click. <laughs> I'm with you, Elise. I'm not even kind of sort of a little bit Irish. Uh, my husband is, but I was like, I don't, I don't have any green. Well, yeah. and I'm a meteorologist, so we work on the green screen. I can't mm -hmm. wear green. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, you have green behind saying. you, That's so you're true. good. Yeah, yeah. you have green, very bright green behind you. Little green on the temperature map. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's jump into your forecast here. We've got temperatures starting to climb into the low 70s, down south Stinson to Pleasanton there. Everyone else in the low to mid 60s, it's 68, New Braunfels 67 in San Antonio. We had some patchy fog this morning, some early morning clouds, and the cloud cover is really hanging pretty tough right now, as you can see. But as we get into the afternoon, we do anticipate a lot of this cloud cover are really starting to break up and clear out uh, moving off to the east and that should leave us with a good amount of sun by this afternoon despite the clouds we have around this morning. So with that cloud cover breaking up that will help us to warm up this afternoon. Here's where we expect your temperatures will land on this Thursday right around 85 here in San Antonio 82 Canyon Lake also 85 in comfort and we can't roll out a few spots jumping into the upper 80s low 90s south and west of San Antonio this afternoon. So it's going to be a warm one and for a lot of us it's going to stay pretty muggy into the the afternoon. We will see humidity drop off west of 35 uh, later on today, but I just want to show you our dew points this morning. For a lot of us, they're in the upper 50s and low 60s, so that is starting to nudge uh, gradually back into muggy territory as far as the humidity is concerned. Now we will see our dew points take a nice tumble as we head into the weekend. So we've actually got a front uh, coming through tonight into tomorrow morning, and that will help our humidity to fall as we get into tomorrow and especially the weekend. So that sets us up for really comfortable days uh, this weekend. And my line graph is being a little funky here. We are going to see a spike in higher humidity once again early next week on Monday. Another front, and it looks like this second cold front here is the one that's going to bring us a chance of rain, potentially even some strong storms as we get into early next week. So we've got a storm system that will be coming in from the west on Monday. During the day Monday, it sweeps across Texas. And this will be a very dynamic storm system, so we are looking at a chance for some strong to severe storms, uh, not only here in San Antonio, but also across a good portion of East and North Texas. So this polygon you see here, that's the risk area that's been highlighted for Monday for the potential for some scattered strong to severe storms. The area with the highest potential to see the most severe weather is this bright red area here from just north of Austin up to Waco. This includes Tyler um, and even Shreveport as you're getting into Louisiana there. So uh, Monday will definitely be a day to watch. Even for us, we could see some um, scattered strong to severe thunderstorms. It's still a little too early to nail down exact timing of when our window will be to see those severe storms, but just keep Monday in the back of your mind because we certainly could have some rumbles of thunder there. That's again with another front that will drop our humidity heading into the middle part of next week. Don't forget spring officially begins on Sunday. Thankfully, unlike daylight savings time, this has nothing to do <laughs> with the clocks. Yes. So just the official start of spring. Check it off Sunday morning, guys. Thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. Still looking Saturday, good. See, Saturday is going to be a good day for the parade, for the St. Patty's Day parade. There we go. Yeah. And 78, people, sunny. Right. And Not people still trying to take every bit of advantage of their spring break. Here you go. We have some good weather there. I mean, they yeah. forecasted it last week. The ones before were the ones that had a cold. Yeah, cold absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, a couple of things. We talked about NCAA. Tour. I want to ask you, Katie, real quick. Texas Tech, when do they play? Okay. <laughs> Tomorrow. But I don't know what okay. time. Texas She's Tech. Ask her husband. <laughs> Got the Red Raiders in there. Uh, uh, some San Antonio kids on that roster. Kevin McCuller. Yeah, Reckham for sure. Reckham. No good doubt. times. No UT is also in the tournament. Yeah, okay, well, Katie's got no comment. I got them out first round. <laughs> They're done. done. Okay, yes. Uh, UT and also Baylor as well, the defending champions. And shout out to UIW. Their women's team was in the NCAA tournament. Unfortunately, they lost yesterday, but they had an incredible season. UIW, the women's team, the Cardinals. Good for them. Yeah. Hold on, you keep saying NCAA. NCAA. Yeah. 
NC2A, NCAA? No, NCAA RJ. <laughs> oh boy. What is this? No! <laughs> Whose is this? <laughs> Flowers. We're having a lot of fun here. Yeah, you're, just, you're gonna mess up my hair here. Yeah. There you go, That's Texas Southern. Represent. All right, all right. Our director, Robert Flowers. I thought it was UT. That's why I was like, no. Oh. <laughs> It's Texas Southern. Look at this right here. No, nice. like I initially thought, like I didn't even see the yeah. colors. Yeah. They won, right, Robert? They play today. Okay, oh. Texas Southern plays today. So we That's have right. some school spirit here. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. Hey. What's up? Everyone's, <laughs> <in a good laughs> <laughs> Everyone's just chiming in today on our show. Well, Alicia, welcome back. It's Thank been you a so good much. day for you to come back. Yeah, right? I'm happy to be back. In. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we had Ursula Perry make an appearance and everybody else, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate uh, everybody who's with us on KSAT News Now. Thank you very much. And we will be back here Friday, Friday morning. Be back at 11 a.m. Hope you guys have a great day.